Premium ships are pretty neat. They provide you with a number of in-game bonuses, such as an improved economy in most cases, and the ability to move commanders onto premium ships without having to pay to respect them. In addition to that, many times they are just downright fun ships to play. However, they do also in most cases cost a pretty penny in order to acquire them. Your standard tier 8 premium ship will run you about 50 bucks American to pick up, whereas tier 9 and tier 10 ships are even more, triple in the case of tier 10 ships. However, the list of ships I have compiled for today's video are, in my opinion, the best free premium ships you can pick up. Now, what do I mean by free premium ship? These are five ships you can acquire in World War ships without spending any money on the game whatsoever. These are resource ships. Resources are things like coal, steel, research bureau points that you can earn in game just by playing the game and not having to drop a single dime on the game in order to acquire them. Of course there are instances where you can spend money in order to acquire these resources faster such as buying containers or in the case of the upcoming dockyard buying your way through the dockyard then playing your way through the combat missions in order to acquire the steel. So in the case of these ships though, again, you can get them completely for free and they are some of the best free premiums in the game, if not some of the best premiums full stop outright. Now another caveat is that technically tier 10 ships or special ships or resource ships or whatever you want to call them, they don't have the baked in premium economy but they do get the premium booster from the um, economic bonus and they still have reduced service costs so you are, are still making more money by playing these ships than a standard premium ship i know that's a, a technicality gets thrown up here and there when i bring up these resource ships but for the sake of this video we're just calling them premium ships i usually do anyway but just so you know that that and we're on the same page and of course these ships are all currently available i'm not putting any ships on this list that are not outright available to buy for coal still research bureau points whatever you have to get in order to acquire these ships these are ships that are fully available right now you can go into the armory or into the research bureau shop and pick these up today so with that out of the way let's go ahead and get on into it but first if you do find yourself enjoying this video please make sure to drop a like leave a comment and subscribe to the channel before you click off the video of course it helps out on the youtube side of things but now into the list we go all right so Coming in at number 5, we have the Tier 7 Premium British Battleship, the Duke of York. The Duke of York is currently available for coal in the armory, and the Duke of York is a pretty interesting ship. She went through quite a tumultuous development cycle. They tried some really weird stuff with the Duke of York back in the day. Originally, she was just absolutely nigh impenetrable with her armor but she didn't have any heal because her armor was so thick they tried to do a battleship without a heal and like cool on paper that that might work but in reality well he is very much a thing and fires still burn regardless of how thick your armor is so they tossed that out the window and what we wound up getting was a more ap focused king george v her setup is pretty cool she has, of course, the same guns that the King George V has, 10 14-inch guns, except they have improved pin angles, but they are still the short-fuse British BBAP. So what that means is that when you run across cruisers, they can angle steeply to you, in most cases that would normally bounce 14-inch shells, but in the case of the Duke of York, your shells are more than likely going to bite because of the improved pin angles, and absolutely wreck them with the Short Fuse AP. Short Fuse AP, if you don't, don't know what that is, the fuse on the AP shell is much shorter than that of a normal AP shell. So when it hits the armor, it goes off much sooner than a normal fuse does. In the case of most battleships, the AP shells will hit the armor of the cruiser and just zip on right through because of course, you know, big armor piercing shells can go through a lot of armor and cruisers have relatively thin armor. So they just zip on through them and detonate on the other side. Unlike every other well most other battleships in the game the british bbs have short fuse ap where instead of zipping through the other side the shell will detonate on the inside and when you have improved penetrating angles well yeah you can just absolutely ruin a cruiser's day with the duke of york 
Add on to that the fact that she still has pretty darn good HE. It's still the British BBHE for most parts. It just has a slightly longer reload time than the King George V. So, yeah, if you can't pin whatever it is that you're shooting at, you can certainly burn it down with the Duke of York, which makes that a very, very, very good thing at Tier 7, because at Tier 7, you can, of course, get double up tier to Tier 9. And unlike a lot of other Tier 7 battleships, who's, you know, their double up tier, their guns are small, their AP's not really doing it, but their HE is kind of, eh? The Duke of York can still hang in there with her very good British BBHE and burn things down if needed. So that's just right there, makes the ship exceptionally comfortable at tier 7. And then, what was really, really, really weird too, they gave the Duke of York Hydro at one point in its development cycle and it just kind of stayed there. So... Yeah, they was just kind of a weird thing it had back in the day, but now that submarines are in the game, of course, getting to see submarine torpedoes sooner than you normally would is a very, very, very good thing. I mean, getting to see any torpedoes before you normally would spot them is an excellent thing, right? So she has that, and that's just great in today's World of Warships. So Duke of York, an amazing Tier 7 premium ship, one that you can get 100% for free using coal. So I would highly recommend you pick this up if you do like British battleships. All right, and on our way down now to number four, we have the Tier 9 American Destroyer, the Black. The Black is a ship that many of us waited quite some time to finally return to the game. And boy, she was definitely worth the wait. Even though she was nerfed quite a bit before her return, she is still, hands down, just one of the best Tier 9 DDs, period, premium or not. Because she is a Fletcher, which, I mean, yes, we have, what, six Fletchers in the game now? We're getting the seventh, finally, with the Johnston. Yes, there are plenty of these ships in the game, but what makes this one different? Well, it's a Fletcher with a radar and that good old American smoke. So, the black is just great for cap contesting, which is how I usually like to play most American DDs, because they're, they're really good at it, in my opinion. So what you do is you go to the cap, you back on into it, and if the other DD gets in the cap with you, typically if you just back into it, you know, a kilometer or two, you tend to have the entire cap in your radar range. Pop your smoke screen, pop the radar, and now you've found the enemy DD in the cap. And since there's not a whole lot of DDs with radar, you're probably going to be able to see them, and they can't spot you. So you then proceed to melt them down with your Fletcher guns, those wonderful American 127 millimeter guns. Rinse, wash, and repeat, and take the cap. And that is a very, very profitable way to play. And this is a tier 9 ship. It is still a premium ship, so you still get that nice economic bonus. And the way the game rewards you for your contributions in the match, when it comes to damage, it's how much did you do versus the ship's overall HP. So yes, if you are just hunting DDs and kicking them out of the caps and doing damage to DDs, sure, you may only have a 60,000 damage done by the end of the game, but that's 60,000 damage done to destroyers. That's a you know good chunk of a destroyer's, well, good chunk of multiple destroyers HP at tier nine. So that's you know, just like if you did 120,000 damage to battleships, right? So you still get rewarded quite well. And since you're going to be, you know, in and around the camps, you're probably going to wind up capping a cap or two. And that's also very profitable when it comes to your economy. So just right there, the ship's a great ship if you need some credits and you know how to fight other DDs. On top of that, again, the ship's just good. <laughs> uh, you do pay for your radar by getting, I believe they are the Tier 8 uh, American DD's torpedoes, the name of which, the Benson, I believe they, she gets two racks, two racks of Benson torpedoes, or they are like her own torpedoes. They are slower, and I do believe they have shorter range than the standard Fletcher torpedoes. I don't have the standard Fletcher. I, I have a bunch of American destroyers, but I haven't gotten up to the Fletcher just yet. Just know that they, they aren't the Fletcher torpedoes. But anyway, she's still great, in my in my opinion. Great at cap contesting, great at, you know, making sure your team gets the, those, those caps. And plus, too, I mean, taking the cap is a big part of winning the game. You can definitely make that happen here with the black. Of course, the standard American shell air drag is definitely a thing here, so you can't really be lobbing shells at range because it's going to take them two business days to get there. But for a close-range cap contesting DD... Look no further than the black, except maybe, maybe the small one. All right, going on down to number three now, we have the Tier 10 French battleship, 
they were gone. Now, unlike our previous two entries who were both available for cold, Burgon is a steel ship. So you do have to do a little bit more to acquire her. Usually you can get coal just by playing the game, getting your three daily coal containers, and just checking your combat missions, seeing what you can do. You can typically get some coal there. You get some coal from your daily login rewards, and usually with whatever event that's going on uh, for the update, some coal is being given out there as well. Still is a little harder to acquire. You do have to be playing ranked or clan battles in order to get it, or again, buying your way through the dockyard. But if you can suffer the rank for a few seasons, you can get your own Burgon. In my opinion, definitely worth the, the increased blood pressure. The Burgon, by the way, has some of the highest stats in the game. I know I just did a video last week about how stats don't really matter too, too much, but the fact remains that it does have some incredibly high stats because it is that good. The, the Burgon is essentially an up-tiered Alsace that's been turbocharged, which is great. Alsace, Alsace by itself is a wonderful tier 9 French battleship, but when you turbocharge it with the improved dispersion of the Burgon, the reload booster, it's just such a wonderful ship. And she's not exactly a one-to-one -one copy of the Alsace either, she does have a different secondary suite, better on the AA side of things, worse when it comes to you, well, being actual secondaries, but the main guns are the star of the show here on the Burgon. You get those 12 15-inch guns, which, yes, those are small by tier 10 standards, but you got 12 of them, and unlike a lot of ships, your shells actually go where you want them to go because of, you know, the trade-off there. And you get a reload booster, so if someone's dumb enough to show you a broadside, pop that reload booster in your Burgon and just pump you know, three salvos of 12 shells into their side as fast as possible. You can get it done if you get the timing right and if you have a good enough adrenaline rush going on at the same time, and it is an absolute sight to behold. So on top of the 12 guns, the shells are also very nice as well. It's a wonderful French bias AP that punches well and truly heavier and harder than you would typically imagine a 15-inch shell to punch, and you get 12 of them per salvo. And the velocity is very nice too, so aiming at range is very, very, very nice. The HE is also pretty darn good. I mean, one, you're throwing 12 shells at the target, so you are going to be setting fires with the HE, and with the reload booster, what that allows you to do is just murder things just burn them down so easily if someone is going bow into you in another higher tier battleship throw some he at them wait till they use their damage con pop that reload booster and then again get 24 or 36 more shells going in their direction and within you know 15 20 seconds right and you're you are going to be be setting some more fires with that follow-up salvo so yeah, this ship is just great at doing damage. It's very quick, too, with the engine boost going. You can absolutely just sprint down a flank, find some sides, and just murder them with your AP and your reload booster. So, yep, great ship here. Well worth the still. And, yes, again, worth the higher blood pressure by having to either grind ranked or clan battles in order to acquire said steel. Definitely save your discount coupon for your still ship, by the way, if you ever, you know, dreaming about picking up a still ship. Save it for that. That way you ain't got to get through as much steel in order to acquire said ship. But going on down now to number two, we have the tier 10 American battleship, the Ohio. I was really, really heavily debating putting the Ohio at number one because it is an absolutely just amazing battleship. It does everything you could want a battleship to do. It's tanky. It's got excellent guns. You can play it a multitude of ways. You can build it into the main battery guns, play it at medium to close range. You can build it to the secondaries, play it at close range. If you really want to snipe, you can also play it at long range too, although it's not that great at that, but it can do it. So it does all that, but why is it, is it at number two? Well, because it is a research bureau ship. The Research Bureau is one of the grindiest things you can get into in this game. In order to acquire Research Bureau points, you have to reset entire tech lines that you have already grinded out and then grind back up them multiple times. Now, you can use a couple of tricks here and there in order to speed up this process. There's a time where they give you a double reset bonus for the Research Bureau points, where when you reset the line one time, it counts as two times, right? So you can get your regrind down from like six, seven-ish to five-ish, again, depending upon what ship you do want. But you still have to regrind an entire line multiple times in order to get set ship. 
you may or may not consider that to be less or more grindy than random, not random battles, than ranked battles or clan battles, but it is what it is, and it's still a pretty steep grind either way, but the ship is still free if you put in the time. But anyway, the Ohio is just lovely. It has American 457mm 18-inch guns, which are not the 460mm 18.1-inch guns that you need in order to overmatch 32 millimeters of armor, but they are still quite hefty. And they overmatch 30 millimeters of armor, which there's a hell of a lot now at higher tier that that does matter for. So you got that going for you. And secondaries if you like playing the ship close it does have a great secondary suite it's like the massachusetts and the georgia where yeah there are 127 millimeter five inch guns but they are quite fast when it comes to the reload and they do have a pretty decent fire starting chance so with you know all these secondaries going on one target at one time as you're probably watching with the illinois in the background illinois is in the background um, yeah, they're, they're really, really good at starting fires. Couple that with the 18-inch guns. You have a hell of a damage output here. The ship is also fairly survivable. It is just the Montana hull, which is a decently tanky hull, but you do get the improved American hill and the improved American damage con with a quicker cooldown time on the damage con as well. So you can use those two consumables to kind of brute force your way through many a situation, which makes the ship excellent for random battles, just fun and goofiness, makes it great for rank, makes it great for clan battles i believe it's like the battleship of choice right now in clan battles either way so yeah if you want a ship that's fun in random battles that can get you through rank that can get you into a clan and get you into clan battles look no further than the ohio and that brings us now down to our number one slot the tier 10 italian cruiser the napoli I know quite a few of you are probably already typing, where's the Napoli at? I did leave it off of the like one of the last uh, top five videos, so here she is once again. Not because I felt bad for leaving her off, but because she is genuinely the best free resource ship you can get in the game right now. Napoli is very similar to the Ohio, except I would argue it's, for its class, better than the Ohio, right? Class for class, better than the Ohio. Napoli is just so... God, it's so stupid. And I feel like I'm in a bipolar relationship with it because I love playing this ship. It's so fun to play. You get sap secondaries, long-range sap secondaries now that get out to 11 kilometers. It's fast. It's maneuverable. You get the exhaust smoke so you can pop that when your secondaries are going off. Then launch your catapult plane, spot the ships that you you know you want to melt down with your sap secondaries, and you know stay undetected while you melt them down on top of having a pretty nice main battery uh, gun set. It's really, really tanky, too. And when you put all this together, it's just like, my God, this ship is crazy. Oh, and it's got torpedoes, too. It's got the 13-kilometer Italian torpedoes. So it's a wonderful ship to play in randoms. It's a coal ship, too. So, again, completely free. But, my God, playing against this thing in clan battles, oh, my Lord. Because, it, it, again, it's maneuverable. It's tanky. You, you hit it with 18-inch guns, and it kind of just doesn't care. Unless you are perfectly flat broadside to something, like you probably see me goof up in uh, the background footage here. And yeah, I do eat a, eat a spicy chunk of damage for it. But unless you're perfectly flat broadside to something, you're probably going to bounce it, or it's going to somehow overpin battleship caliber shells. I don't know what's going on here, but it's how it works. Trust me, I've been shooting at these things in clan battles all season, and pre and in previous seasons too. It's just like my God, the, the, the ship is just so, so dumb. But yeah, it's it's great, just like the Ohio, great in randoms, great in ranked, great in clan battles. It's a ship, definitely, unless it get, just gets banned from here on out, like the the Kleber normally does from a uh, future clan battles. It's going to be pretty popular in clan battles too. And again, it can get you through ranked incredibly, incredibly easily with a Napoli. And on top of all that, it's fun. It's fun to play this in randoms as a secondary uh, ship. And it does have sap secondaries. Those secondary guns that, you know, look how like we were talking about with the 127mm guns in the Ohio, how they can't pin 32mm of armor. Uh, the sap secondaries, I mean, it's sap, so 
they can and will just murder pretty much whatever it is that you need to have murdered at tier 10 because of the pinning and alpha damage that sap does have so it's it's great for that it's a ton of fun and again above all else it is a free coal ship that you can get by simply playing the game getting your daily coal containers you will eventually get it but again like i said you can do other things to speed that up you know playing uh or partaking whatever event or or uh ranked or whatever's going on you can boost your coal earnings like that so guys those are my top five free premium ships let me know in the comments down below what would you add to this list what would you remove from it what are your top five free premium or resource ships whatever you want to call them hope you guys enjoyed have a wonderful monday and wonderful rest of your week I hope to catch you guys in the next one <laughs>